Hey, how's it going, y'all? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood med student. If the image looks a little bit different today, it's because I got a new GoPro camera to now help me shoot my vlogs. And I posted it on, on my Instagram last night, but I'm so excited to use this camera because the focal range is so good. And I can just literally just carry this anywhere that I can in the city and not get too many stairs. It's probably gonna get a, <laughs> some stairs because I have a microphone on top and a tripod down here but it's just gonna be so much easier to carry um, a camera setup much more easily with a lot better footage for my GoPro. So today's a really busy day, it's Friday. Uh, I have a residency interview uh, in about an hour, but I wanna get some chores done before the interview. So I have a lot of packages today, if you can see. Um, I have all these Chewy boxes because I needed to re uh, buy the litter for my cats and there's a lot of boxes here that I gotta throw out so I'm gonna clean my living room up a bit also I need to cook lunch today uh, meal prep my lunches so I have all these dishes in the sink that I want to put in the dishwasher and clear out the dishwasher so a lot to do before this interview and of course I want to have lunch okay the first thing I'm gonna do is open this entire box full of litter um, and clean it up let me grab my box cutter Before I used to use scissors to open boxes like this, but once I got this like Milwaukee box cutter, it's like so much nicer to open boxes with these. And it's pretty cheap. It cost me like, I think 10 bucks. And it's retractable. So it's safe, especially when you have like things like kids and a cat that will always be a kid for you. So here it is, it's a 40 pound uh, bag of cat litter. And I usually get the feline pine brand because he, he likes it and it's more absorbent and cost affordable. In addition to getting the cat litter, I also got these like tiki cat sticks, which I'm really excited to give him because he really likes lickable treats, but the tiki cat brand is like premium or whatever. They're expensive, but they were on sale if I bought some cat litter from Chewy this week so I'm excited to give him some of this so the boxes are all unboxed so I'm probably gonna put them away after the interview because I have to go down to the grocery not the grocery store where CVS is because CVS hasn't been picking up any of my calls today and I need to refill a prescription and the last time I called I called them twice this morning the last time I called someone picked up the phone but didn't answer and left the phone on the counter so I could hear everything that was going on which honestly is a HIPAA violation so I hope CVS is listening on this so my dishes are clean and put away I have cleaned up most of my apartment I just need to take those boxes out now so I'm about to prepare lunch because I got about 40 minutes before my interview and I want to save like at least 15 minutes the last 15 minutes to get dressed get ready and be able to like be prepped so for lunch what I'm having is my usual meal prep which is cilantro lime rice with black beans brown rice specifically because I, I I do love the fiber in brown rice it makes my poops better and then I usually make a jerk chicken with mushrooms and usually the mushrooms I cook in ghee which is this kind of clarified butter that South Asian people use I just think it's really really tasty so this is the cilantro lime rice if you can see it's really tasty and to be honest sometimes like regular white rice tastes better but i prefer the brown rice in my usual meal prep just because i want that extra extra goody goody nutrition and then this is the jerk chicken so there's about two servings left in here but that's the beautiful delicious jerk chicken oh my god and my cat's up in the rooftop i gotta show you all this he loves doing this sometimes but that's him up there hey jean luc what are you doing up there baby yeah, now you don't know how to get down. Like he does, he does this so much, and he's moved my stuff, so he's gonna fall on top of my head one day and try. I think he's out, out there to try and kill me. But uh, <laughs> I'm gonna prep the jerk chicken and have lunch. Oh man, I'm so excited! I can never get tired of this meal just because of how flavorful jerk chicken is. So 
So I'm gonna pop this in the microwave and uh, we're gonna have lunch. Mm. I just finished all my jerk chicken and mushrooms with brown rice, uh, brown cilantro lime rice with black beans and it was uh, so good and so filling. I am ready for my interview. I'm gonna get dressed and um, just prep a little bit and then I'll see y'all on the other side. Mwah. Hey y'all, I just finished my interview. It took about three hours. That, that to me is heaven on earth because some of these interviews can drag on from six to a full eight hour day. Some of these are two day interviews. So the programs that do three to four hour interviews, y'all have a special place in my heart because you know, I start getting Zoom fatigue, but also I start getting a migraine because I have to use, a lot of us have to use ring lights to make sure the lighting is good at the place we're at. And like, I start getting a migraine if I had that ring light on for so long. So I'm done with my interview. I'm gonna change out to my regular clothes again and then um, take out the trash, go to CVS and get my prescription. It's been such an awful time to get this prescription from CVS. So. We're gonna do that, come back, and we're gonna cook uh, cook dinner. So I'm all ready and uh, ready to go to CBS. It's probably gonna take me a 20 minute drive to get just three miles because it's almost prime time rush hour in Atlanta right now. Atlanta's just a mess. But one thing I really wanted to talk about while my car is heating up is uh, something that really um, kind of like made me feel good at this interview is that this was a program at a more rural part of North Carolina and the program director I've met him before and he has this he's like this um, he has a really thick <laughs> southern accent and I always get a little scared when it comes to talking to people with thick southern accents because my mind immediately goes well what if he's going to discriminate against me but it was especially because I had an unfortunate circumstance uh, a couple of interviews ago but this man was amazing he was so sweet he validated me he told me everything that I was doing was for the greater good of my patients and I really loved that he made me feel so good about the work that I do and you know it's just so validating to have someone you know you have this expectation of someone to treat you badly but they end up beating your expectations and end up being an, a really awesome ally so I really appreciated that and um just love that. All right, um, just gonna wait for the car to heat up and then I'm gonna head to, over to CVS and see what this BS is about because um, the fact that they're not even picking up the phone but the one time that they pick up the phone, they didn't address me, they set the phone to the side and I could hear them talking about patient information. That's a HIPAA violation, it's illegal and that can get them in serious, serious trouble. All right, I just finished up at CVS and they are super super busy on Fridays. I don't think I'm gonna fill the scripts on Fridays anymore. It's a hot mess. I was like the second person in line and it took them forever and they were completely understaffed. So I feel kind of bad for them. Although I do think some of the service was unprofessional that I got earlier this morning. Um, they told me it's gonna take a couple hours for them to fill out my script after I requested for them to fill it. So I'm, just, I'm not gonna stick around. I'm probably just gonna go home, meal prep, and pick it, pick it up sometime tonight because it's a 24 hour CVS. And right now there's just way too many people here. I think I'll probably get annoyed if I stayed. So uh, I was thinking about going to Marshall's, but I just wanna go home and cook and I have to pee real bad. So I'm gonna go do that. Wow, so that took about an hour to do just to go to CVS three miles down the street and ask them to fill a subscription, not, not even just pick up a refill, just ask them to fill the prescription. Oh my God, that CVS is booked and busy on Fridays. And of course, traffic from three to 6 p.m. in Atlanta is a hot mess. So even though I wanted to get that sweater and to get that uh, face cream from Marshalls, I'll probably just do it tomorrow because that was not worth it. I can't believe I sat in traffic for that long. I'm gonna go change out and then start cooking dinner because I'm starting to get a little a little hungry. Okay, so I'm in the kitchen, I'm ready to cook dinner. It's gonna take about maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes uh, to prep and put in the instant pot. But it's basically ground turkey chorizo, chorizo that I self-marinated by hand uh, with shrimp. And I'm gonna add onions, a potato in it, and also some cilantro and some limes. But 
the coolest thing I'm going to do today is I recently got this manual vegetable chopper. I have an automatic one for things like cilantro, herbs and spices that I need to chop really well. But there's some things that I don't really want to chop super fine. So I got this uh, vegetable chopper from Amazon and it has like a container underneath it so it collects everything. And it has different size blades in the middle. I don't know if y'all can see, but there's different size blades in the middle. So this should make me cutting my onions and potatoes so much more easier and, you know, faster <laughs> and faster to do. So I'm excited to try it out. We're going to do the onion first and see if it works and if it was a good uh, buy because it was kind of pricey. I spent about 30 bucks on it. So I hope I hope it works well. Okay, so... I have the onion cut in half now on the chopper and we're about to test it out to see if it works. I'm so, so freaking excited. So let's see if it works, all right? I'm gonna take this down and push. Ooh, it needs a little bit of an extra heft. And let's see. Wow, it completely chopped up the onion. All right, let's try this, this onion too. This, this side is a little bigger and I think I got to fit it in. Okay, so it doesn't completely fit in. Let's cut it in half. Okay, now it fits. Let's try again. Damn! <laughs> got to put some heft to it and then I got to shake it up so it goes in the bottom. Wow, but it cuts it so well. I didn't even have to chop any of this onion up. Last part of the onion. Wow. That just made my job three times faster. I love it. So now I'm ready to do the potatoes. Uh, with the potatoes, I want them to be slightly diced. So I cut them into like these wedges right here. These were really easy to do. But what I find most annoying is when I dice potatoes is actually making the vertical cuts this way and the horizontal cuts this way so this chopper should be able to do that part for me pretty easily and it won't take me that much of an issue at all and since it's smaller than the onion it should be much easier to cut chop with this device and would you look at that perfectly chopped potatoes I'm just gonna do all these slices back to back then I wonder if I can even stack them up if I wanted to Perfectly chopped potatoes in a matter of seconds. Wow, that is beautiful. I love this. This is so great. And these are my potatoes, perfectly, perfectly chopped. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my Instant Pot. I put some oil in already and I'm going to set it to saute mode and put it on medium just so the oil gets hot and with that i'm going to add a little bit of cumin the seasoning is mostly in my uh, ground turkey chorizo that i marinated overnight already so mostly i'm just gonna add a little bit of cumin um a little bit of paprika a little bit of tang a little bit of salt and then add sweat out the onions and sweat out the potatoes and once i do that i'm ready to add a little bit of water and then i'm gonna add my chorizo in there and i'm just gonna let the instant pot do its work so I just added in the onions and I'm just basically sweating these onions out until I'm ready to add the potatoes. Once the potatoes are added, all I'll have to do is add some water and it'll be ready for the ground turkey. A lot of people are going to ask me, so why are you adding why are you adding water before you add the ground turkey? And honestly, it's because of the limitations of the instant pot. There's this safety thing thing built in that if it gets burnt at the bottom it's not going to heat up anymore and I've had this issue a lot with a lot of dishes with the instant pot although I do love sauteing the meat before I add the water it just makes it not viable with the instant pot so I'll take that L just so I can get a very very big meal out of using an instant pot that I can meal prep I'll take a small hit in the deliciousness of the food but my food is so good it can take a hit. So at this point the onions are mostly sweated out and cooked pretty well. 
in the oil. So I'm going to add the potatoes and mix them in. Okay, while the onions and potatoes are enjoying their time with each other, I'm going to show you all the chorizo marinade I made. It looks so beautiful. It's incredibly red. I don't know if it can be translated well into the image quality of the GoPro, but it is so red and it's so beautiful. It's ready. It's been marinating. It's been seeping all those delicious spices in the meat. I'm so excited to add it to the Instant Pot and then just let it do its own thing. And then after the ground turkey cooks and melts a little bit, then I can add, add then I can pressure release the the instant pot and then add the shrimp in afterwards. I'm gonna cancel the saute mode. And then pressure cook this for at least 30 minutes. All right, y'all. So while my stuff cooks, I think it'll be a great time for me to talk a little bit about the process of getting my passport, my ID, and my gender marker changed in like all my government forms. I'm a naturalized US citizen, so I also had to get it changed on my citizenship naturalization form. And also eventually I'll have to get it changed with social security. Those are the main government forms if you're thinking about changing your gender marker on anything that you should focus on. So when it comes to, oh, I had the password on <laughs> backwards for this video the entire time. So the main thing that you should know is the fact that Changing your gender marker on government forms has become so, so, so much easier than it was in the past, especially when it comes to federal, um, federal things. So the passport, easiest one. Uh, I live in Georgia, which tends to be a more conservative state, and even in Georgia, changing my ID gender marker was so much easier than uh, it has been in the past. So the ideal way to do it, and I'm going to tell you the easy way and the way that I did it because of time limitations and other factors, but the easiest way to do it is to file for a new passport first. So if you already have an old passport, just file for a renewal. You can do an earlier re renewal, just fill out that form. And you, when you fill out that form, you can just, uh, there's a little question box now where it says, are you renewing your passport to change anything? And one of the tick marks that they have is to change your gender marker. So I tick that, I uh, put in my old passport in the mail envelope, shipped it in, added, included the fees that I needed to do, and I did the expedited service just because I wanted to have one federal government form with my gender marker on it in case when I'm applying for residency programs and they want me to prove my citizenship status or anything like that, I can send it in with the correct gender marker so I'm not have a big F in my employee ID or whatever throughout the rest of residency, which is going to be a four to five year affair for me. So with the passport, it's super easy. Just fill it out. Um, because I did expedited, I got my passport within three weeks. Amazing. It's completely correct. I'm so happy. And then what all you would need to do is just go straight to the DMV and apply for a new license at whatever state you're in. and. For me, um, that would include um, bringing a form of identification, such as a passport for me, and um, two, two letters that have been sent to my address so they can verify my address. It's nothing really fancy, but because I needed to do my passport first, I needed to provide a reasoning behind on why I changed my gender marker. If you had your passport already changed with your correct gender marker, you don't need to provide that um, in Georgia, at least. So um, I got a form. That's my dryer, if you can hear it. <laughs> but I got a form filled out by my primary care provider telling me that I had done the necessary transition uh, to live as a man for the rest of my life. And... Um, it, the, the form basically talked about when I started my medical transition, when I started my social transition, how long that this provider has been seeing me, and why I deserve to essentially uh, have my gender marker change. And it usually says that Ben has met the qualifi not qualifications, Ben has been living as a man for this amount of years and it's appropriate for his gender marker to be M. So, and then my primary care provider signs off on it and then give it to the DMV folks along with every other form they ask for to renew my license. So um, 
that's that process and then when it comes to the citizenship of naturalization something that you do have to know is that 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 letter that i sent in for the dmv that letter has to be signed by an md according to their website mine was signed by my np and co-signed by my md but uh, i'm still waiting on that process to see if they want me to rewrite that letter and have my the md of that practice sign off on it not just the nurse practitioner uh, as the primary sign but, but we'll see that process takes a lot longer for the citizenship naturalization certificate it can take up to nine months to get that form reprinted and sent out to you so it's going to be a hot minute and once i get that i'll do social security and from what i've heard from about the social security change it's really easy if you get all those other things changed so bring your id bring your passport with your new gender marker tell them that you have a new gender marker and you want your social security updated with your uh, correct gender and they'll just do it on the spot um that's what i've read on the online forums when it comes to trans mask people changing with their social security so those are the main government forms um passport took about a month license literally took a day <laughs> i had to make an appointment and go there and then i got my id within two weeks uh, of uh, filling that out at the dmv it's just the uh, loops and hurdles that I had to get through to get those approved. All right, y'all, the chorizo is done cooking. It's steaming up really nicely. It's a little liquidy if you haven't noticed, but that's what happens when you use the Instant Pot. I'm gonna add all the shrimp in. I'm gonna add all these limes, all the cilantro, cook it some more, simmer it down, get that water to reduce, and my cheat sheet when it comes to making things look a little less soupy in an instant pot when i cook with it is to add a little bit of cornstarch already mixed in some water so i'm gonna do that and then the dish is gonna be completely ready here it is y'all enough ground turkey chorizo and shrimp four days i'm so excited to eat it i'm gonna do a quick taste test and then i'm gonna turn this camera off and go eat Okay, I got a little bit of chorizo on my spoon. Mmm, 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 man. Ooh, it is so, so, so tasty. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this vlog. I hope y'all uh, got to learn a little bit about the process of how I changed my gender marker. And uh, I hope... Uh, this gives you a little bit of inspiration to do your own meal prepping. I know meal prepping sounds really boring, but it keeps me alive. It keeps me going. It keeps me, it keeps me from having to eat really awful food as a med student and future doctor who's going to be a resident soon. I like to make delicious meal prep, and the, the, this is just one of my recipes. Anyways, love you all, and I'll see you all in the next vlog. Mwah! This is Ben.